Hey Pally, I'm Sarah Nash. Today's Tuesday, April 10th, 2018, and InFocus starts right now. Did you get stuck in the world's busiest airport over spring break? We'll tell you which airport took the honor and why. The quad will be all about Earth Day next week thanks to One Pally Club, and students around the country are talking about gun violence and what to do about it. One Pally Publication is bringing the issue to their most recent issue. Welcome to In Focus. We've got a great show for you today. Let's get started with our daily pick. We'd like to thank Vivian Fang for sending today's daily pick our way. Send in a daily pick anytime simply by tweeting us at Pally In Focus. Today's pick shows Henry Saul placing second in the 3200 Arcadia Track and Field Invitational last weekend. He's now fourth in the state for the 3200 meter. Vivian is a proud fan. Congrats, Henry. Now let's take a look on what's happening around campus with today's Campus Bulletin. Pally students interested in film production have the opportunity to submit an original short piece under 10 minutes long to the Palo Alto Mid Peninsula Media Center by May 11th and get exposure and some great prizes. KPLY is holding an international music live show tomorrow, Wednesday, April 11th. There will be great music, some fun competition, and KPLY socks and stickers will be given away. The event is on the quad in front of the Student Center tomorrow at lunch. Stanford University's Logic Camp this summer is looking for attendees. The course will be taking place from June 18th to the 29th in the Gates Building and is available to rising 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Necessary prerequisites include being comfortable with sets, relations, functions, and symbolic manipulation. The well, Pally Prom happens this Saturday at SF City Hall. Prom bus, uh, prom bus sign ups are live with a link on School G. Moving on now from what's going on around campus to what's happening in the world today, topping today's headlines. The governor of Arizona, Doug Ducey, announced yesterday that he will be deploying 338 National Guard troops to assist with security on the U.S.-Mexico border. Ducey is the second border state governor to answer President Trump's call to mobilize National Guard troops to help stop the flow of illegal immigrants. However, border arrests in 2017 reached their lowest point since 1971, with a, repo with a report by the Department of, Home of the Department of Homeland Security calling the border more difficult to illegally cross today than ever before. Well, according to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the coroner misidentified two of the Humboldt Broncos hockey players that were involved in the fatal bus crash this weekend, holding their hockey team and coaching staff when they collided with a semi-truck. Xavier LaBelle, who was originally listed among the deceased, is actually alive, while Parker Tobin, who had been listed among the survivors, died as a result of the Friday collision. The world's busiest airport has been officially named, and it's Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport in Atlanta, Georgia. According to preliminary 2017 travel data, Hartsfield-Jackson had nearly 104 million passengers passing through the airport last year. Beijing Capital International has long been ahead of Hartsfield-Jackson and has held the top two spots for two decades. Many viewers have pets that they adore, but on average, 1,423 abused animal cases are reported to the, to the U.S. each year. Animal protection is the topic for this installment of Today in History. Today in 1863, the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals was founded by Henry Berg to prevent the abuse and poor treatment of all animals. He stated these mute servants of mankind deserve more protection than what they were getting at a February meeting at Clinton Hall in 1866. He argued that protecting animals was an issue that crossed party lines and class boundaries. Pali Zero Waste Initiative is hosting various events for Earth Week. Paul Thai is in the field with more information. Paul? Earth Week is next week, and what better way to celebrate than by joining Pally's Environmental Club's organization with a wide variety of activities and events every day at lunch. On Monday, guest speaker Isabel Kundal will be discussing the environmental issues by animal agriculture, and every other day of the week there will be activities on the quad. Food will be provided at particular events, and participation in a single event will enter in a week-long raffle for a variety of prizes. For a schedule of the all events, visit tinyurl.com slash pallyearthweek. That's all for me. Back to you in the studio. Thanks for that, Paul. Paul's out on the field, but Abby Black's in the studio now with news about our Pally athletes on the field. How are sports looking today, Abby? Things are a little slow in sports news, Sarah. We only have two games on our docket today. Like I said, there are only two chances to root on your Pally teams today. First, the boys varsity golf team heads down to Mountain View to take them on in a conference game at 3 p.m. Also, co-ed varsity badminton has a conference game today at Lynbrook at 3.30. Good luck, Vikes. That's all for sports. Back to you, Sarah.
Thanks for that, Abby. The gun control and gun violence debate is all over the news. It's on TV and in papers and magazines. One Pali publication found a creative way to bring this debate to their pages. Anushka sits down with the editors in today's Campus Zoom. In Focus, we'll be right back after this. Um, to me. Yeah, just look at me. Hi, I'm here with Julie Cornfield. Asha Guardius. From Verity Magazine. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so what are you guys' roles in the magazine? So I'm an outgoing editor-in-chief. And I was a staff writer on the cover package, and I'm the current digital editor-in-chief. Cool. So for those of you guys have, who have caught the new issue, um, there's actually a hole in the magazine. So what, um, like, why did you guys decide to do that? So when we were assigning stories for this issue, it was about the time that um, the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas happened. So we wanted our cover package to focus on the response to the shooting. Um, and we wanted it to also have a pally focus. So one of the cover stories in our magazine is about um, student activists at Pali and how they responded to the shooting. And then we also wanted to bring in the perspectives of students who are more pro-Second Amendment and who have more experience with guns. And in order to kind of bring those two stories together and make the cover package more cohesive, we had a whole brainstorming session where we came up with images um, and ideas for the cover itself. And the idea of a bullet hole kind of got tossed around. And our advisor, Mr. Kandel, went to um, our printers and asked them if it would be possible to even put a hole in the magazine. And they were all about it. So Cool. So was there controversy between putting the hole or not putting the hole? Um, everyone on our staff understands that um, the gravity of gun violence is just very, it's, it's really intense. Um, and we wanted to do our part to further the discussion about it. Um, and while it may not be the most aesthetic to look at a spread that has two holes in it, um, we all wanted to make the sacrifice for the visuals of our magazine in order to further the conversation and to do what we could to bring light to the issue. So um, have you guys gotten any like exposure from this? So there have been a couple of news uh, media outlets that have contacted us, but I think the more interesting thing that happened was that we had a staff writer from uh, Voice, Eddie Wing, um, post our cover on a Reddit, and it ended up reaching the front page, um, and it got like a bunch of up upvotes and uh, comments. So it was very interesting to see our uh, like message being spread and the response to it as well. Very cool. Um, do you have any message for Pali students? Um, well, we did have our own lockdown and we experienced kind of a taste of the terror that comes with the threat of gun violence. Um, it's very hard to understand um, the experience of Parkland students. So we want to do what we can to further the conversation. Great. Thank you for joining us. Back to you in the studio. Now it's time to get another piece of the puzzle as we see if we can figure out who this week's Guess Who staff member is. Today's clue is that her first job was at a Xerox at getting a wage of $25. Do you guys know who it is? Be sure to tweet your guesses to us at Pally and Focus. We'll feature the winning names on Friday when we get to meet our secret staff member. Now it's time to find out who our birthday boys and girls are for today. In Focus wishes a very happy birthday to Brianna Patino Ayala, Abby Bias, Anthony Xi, and Dougal Fraser. Well, that does it for today's episode. Be sure to visit our website to check out old episodes, check the bulletin, or to send us an email. Till next time, have a great day, Polly.